Today, we're going to be using both lead and lag functions within SQL. Now, this is pretty powerful because it allows you to output multiple values within a column in one specific row and kind of compare trends. One really good example is if you're going to be looking at sales data within a company on specific years. So you can build out multiple lead or lag functions to look at 23 compared to 22 and 21. I'm going to jump on my computer and show you three different example queries. So the table that we're going to be looking at for these first two queries is called Kershaw Stats. They show the season and strikeouts for Clayton Kershaw, a pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers, and one of the best in the league. As you can see over here, this column has the season, and then this one over here has the strikeouts per season. So let's start off writing this first query. So we're going to be like taking a look at a basic lead and lag uh, with no parameters really defined. And then our output is going to be season, strikeout, strikeout season before, and strikeouts after. So that mind, let's put our select statement over here. Then we're going to put over here as season. Then we're going to also put as strikeouts. And then now we're going to look at our first lead function. So I'm going to put over here lead. Now inside, you do have to have the one parameter uh, that you want to take a look at. So we're going to have a look at the strikeouts. We're going to have over. And then inside here, we're going to have order by. And we're going to be taking a look at that season column because we want to see the strikeouts Let's say, for example, in 2020, we're going to have one of these that shows 144 and the other one shows uh, 189. So I'm going to put season in ascending order. So that way we go from 2008 all the way through 2022. And then we're going to put lead strikeouts. And we're going to just copy this over here. And we're going to do lag this time. So instead of that, put lag and then over here. G. I'm going to remove this comma and then we're going to do from and then just copy over here for Herschel stats. I'm going to show you exactly how this works. Let's grab that and here we go. So now this table is ordered by season. So you can see since we're ordering it by season ascending, it goes from 2008 all the way through 2022. So then you have your strikeouts column over here, which matched before. Now you have lead strikeouts. So this one shows 185, which is the next season, right? So 2009, 185, but it shows a null for the season before because in 2007, Clay Kershaw was in the minor leagues. So he would have no strikeouts in the majors. Now, if you look at 2022, the lead is going to be null. And that's because I didn't put the 2023 stats in here yet because the season is not complete. However, you can see 144, which is from 2021. So again, lead like this and lag sort of like this, not too complicated, but this time we're going to add in a few different parameters. So query number two, we're going to be taking a look at lag with other parameters. So what I want to have is output the season, the strikeouts, the season before strikeouts, two seasons before and strikeouts, three seasons before. So this time we're going to be having nulls for all 2008, 2009 is going to have a few nulls and 2010 is going to have one null. So let's copy this over here and then we're going to paste this. So we no longer need this specific lead that is gone. And we're just going to be taking a look at lag. So what you can do is for this one, we're going to put lag strikeouts year before. I'm just going to copy this over. times and we're going to put two years before and then strikeouts three years before remove this comma here at the end and then we're going to define another parameter in here so this time we're going to put two and this time on this one we're going to look at three so now if you run this specific one so here you go so 2008 shows 100 strikeouts, null, because there's nothing before that, null and null. 2009, we have 185 strikeouts for that season. 100 for 2008, null, because 2007 doesn't exist. And null because 2006 doesn't exist. And in 2010, 185 is there, 100 and a null. So the first one that's going to work properly then is 2011. So 248 strikeouts there before 212, 185, and also 100. Before we get into this third query example, I do want to show you guys how you can actually replace these nulls if you really wanted to. So that is going to be another parameter that's defined within this function. So what you can do is put another comma over here 
and you can define it as like, for example, zero. We'll do that over here. That is zero. And since we're just gonna have our normal lag on this one, we're gonna put one and then also zero. Now, if we run this one specifically, watch what happens. So now all these show up as a specific zero. So your opportunity or your choice really to define if you wanna have it as a null or if you wanna have it as a zero. But so for our third query, we're gonna be taking a look at a table called baseball stats. I've used this in a few other videos as well. Uh, first column, we have the player, then we have the specific team. Then we have the league, which in baseball, you have American League and National League. You have the batting average, hits, and home runs for the specific player. So what we're trying to do on this one is we're going to show the player home runs per league, which this is the per league is going to give you a hint for the partition by with the trailing and two players behind. So Aaron Judge has 62 home runs. This is going to be first in this table. Uh, the second player would be Mike Trout with 40. The third would be Otani. And we want to have columns showing 40 home runs and also 34 uh, populated next to Aaron Judge. So our output right here is kind of like that. So let's build this out. So we're going to start off with a select statement. Then we're going to grab our normal columns. So we need to have the player. We need to have the league and also home runs. Now let's think about how we're going to specifically build this if we're going to use a lead or a lag function. Now, if we want to have Aaron Judge here at the top, I'm thinking we have a lead function. That way, underneath it, we'll have the second place and we can populate that over here. So we're going to have a lead and we're going to do the home runs field like this and have over. And then inside here, we need to have that partition by league. And then in here, we're going to do order by home runs descending. So that way, Judge will be top and I'll put home run one and then we're going to copy this over here let's make sure we have that comma and then we'll put home run two for this remove the comma and then we're going to put from baseball stats let's make sure all this is correct and before I run this forgot actually one thing let's make sure this is home run and then two so we can show two behind it now let's run the query. And you can see for Aaron Judge, we have 62 home runs. Home run one is 40, and then home run two is 34. You can see Mike Trout is second place at 40, shows 34, 31. Otani has 34, 31, and 20. Stanton over here, 31, 20, and null, because we don't have that many players in the AL on this side of things. And Randy, since he's in last place, has 20 and also two nulls. On this side of things, Xander Bogarts at the bottom has two nulls, has 15 home runs there. And then at the very top over here, we have Mookie Betts. So we set up the partition by correctly. We set up the home run one and home run two correct as well. Hope this video was helpful. If it was, hit that subscribe button because it does help out with the YouTube channel. Now, if you want to learn even more about intermediate SQL queries, you should check out this video right here where we go over row number, rank, and dense rank. Extremely powerful tools to have in your arsenal.